five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, from the most infected, well, not the most infected anymore, from just another city, New York, it's the Ramble with me. I'm Alex Bennett, and hi there, how are you? Good evening, welcome to our little show, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try and enter, let us entertain you. Yeah, anyway. Um, how are y'all? Listen, every, mor every morning when uh, girlfriend and I, when I get up, and uh, girlfriend's already up, she's been doing her Peloton, and uh, she's been doing her work for the office and everything, and about uh, 11.30, we settle down with a good cup of coffee and our television set, and uh, is that an old term? Or, or just our screen, our cable, our whatever. And I go to, I use uh, YouTube, uh, and I go to... Uh, Mario Cuomo's, or Mario Cuomo's, uh, Andrew Cuomo's daily updates on the coronavirus. Um, now, today, uh, he was especially interesting, and I'm going to play a bit of that for you in just a moment. Uh, and uh, at the end, he said that uh, as starting Friday, he's not going to be doing this every day now, which it's like, you know what it is? It's like a series that's been canceled that you liked. You know, I, I want him to do it every day because he brought us such just calm and so on. But anyway, and you'll hear that in a moment. So I want to play about a 15-minute stretch of a, a, well, two, a, two segments, and they're cobbled together so that uh, you, you don't have to hear a lot of information you don't need to know, okay? But he starts off talking about where we are right now and how much things have improved. And I want you to hear the kind of pep talk he gives us. And then he goes into the whole thing about why other states are infected and so on. And I hope you'll listen to this because more than anything else, what I found with Andrew Cuomo is he educates me. Ed educates me. Uh, and it's not political. He's not left or right. He says he doesn't like that kind of politics in the, in, in the middle of a pandemic, okay? And so he's not being political. He's just simply saying, hey, here's, uh, here's what's going on, and uh, this is how it goes, and uh, this is, you know, what's happening. So I want you to listen to this and uh, listen to what he's got to say. I think you, you, for most of you who don't watch this every day, and they don't put them out over, you know, MSNBC or CNN any longer uh, every day, uh, this is really an education, and it is also an idea of why we're in the mess we're in. It's not political. You don't have to be left or right to listen to this and to probably agree with what he has to say. So let's go, and here's our uh, governor, the great, ladies and gentlemen, the governor of New York State. On the reopening, we're continuing to follow the data and the metrics. Our number of hospitalizations, lowest level since we started, amen, 1,400. Number of deaths, 17 deaths in the state of New York. 17. Lowest number since we started. I would feel, the only way I could feel better is if that number ever becomes zero. But 17, we Remember in our thoughts and prayers, the 17 lives lost. But this is great, great news compared to where we've been. Lowest level on the three-day rolling average. That is the mountain. There it is. We always were wondering about the configuration of that mountain. What did it look like? How high was it going up? When would it crest? What was the plateau? How do we flatten the curve? How long would it take us to get down? And then, to add to the good news, we almost have too much good news, we did about 60,000 tests yesterday. Put that in context, 60,000 tests on one day. 
No state in the United States is doing that. 60,000 tests across the state. Number who tested positive? Less than 1%. That is the lowest percentage of positive that we have had since we have started, period. That is one of the lowest levels in the United States of America. And we, once again, have demonstrated that we've gone from the worst infection rate in the country to the best infection rate in the country. Just think about that for a minute. Those are not words. Those are powerful facts. We had the worst infection rate. The rate of transmission was the highest. We now have the lowest rate of transmission. Just think about what this state accomplished, what the people of this state accomplished. And if I told you 108 days ago, we were going to accomplish that, what would we have said? What would I have said? I would have said I didn't believe it. I would have said I didn't believe it was possible. But facts are facts. And you look at these facts, and I am telling you today, the federal government is making a mistake. And it is making an historic mistake. And that is not a political comment. That is a fact-based, objective comment. That this federal government is making a mistake on the way it is handling this COVID crisis and how it is now advising states and the people of this nation. On the facts, it is a mistake. We had the political debate. How do we reopen? We should just reopen immediately. Uh, this is all overblown. It's fine. That was theory A, right? Uh, there was a partisan divide to it. Uh, more conservatives argued that. Government should just get out of the way, let the free market do it, right? That was the Wall Street Journal, New York Post, conservative theory, just open the doors. And then there was another theory. Let's reopen based on data. Let's not just reopen blindly as an expression of political ideology. We're dealing with a virus. The virus doesn't have a political ideology. No doctor ever said to me, oh, we did a COVID test, found out it was conservative, found out it was liberal. It's a virus. It moves as a matter of science. But there were two theories. We tested the two theories. We went into the laboratory, we tested the two theories. And now you have numbers. And numbers don't lie. You have 20 states where you have the COVID virus increasing as a matter of numbers. Fact. Look at the headlines. Facts. The COVID virus is increasing in 20 states across the country. The states without the smart reopening plans are going up. That is a fact. It's not a Democratic fact. It's not a Republican fact. There are no Democratic facts and Republican facts. They were just facts. There's Democratic opinion, Republican opinion, but there are no Democratic facts or Republican facts. That is a fact. Well, what's New York's interest in the rest of the nation? First of all, we're Americans, and we care about other Americans. Secondly, on a parochial level, if those states are going up, they could spread the virus to New York. They have a higher rate of infection than New York. What happens when those people get on planes and fly to New York? That's how we got here in the first place, right? People landing at our airports. So we do have a selfish interest. Same interest that so many states expressed when we were at the beginning of this, and they were worried about New Yorkers going to their states, right? We lived through that. Well, now it's the inverse. Now people are getting on planes, they're traveling. They could actually be bringing the virus to New York. Well, 
you hear from the federal government, the numbers are going up because we're doing more testing. That is just not true. As a matter of fact, as a matter of mathematics, as a matter of the data, that is just not a true statement. Forget the testing. Hospitalizations are going up. The number of people going into hospitals is going up. How do you explain that? Are they pretending to be sick? Are they not really sick? And you see the number of hospitalizations going up in those places where the percentage is going up in testing. First, their argument on testing doesn't make any sense because not only is testing going up, but the percentage of positive is going up. But even put that aside because it's complicated for people. People walking into the hospitals are going up, which by definition means people, more people are getting sick. Otherwise, more people don't go into hospitals. That's Arizona. That's Texas. And by the way, it tracks with the increase in the testing. But it is undeniable but that more people are getting sick when more people are going into hospitals. New York, the number of people going into hospitals is going down. The percent testing positive is going down. These are facts. This is undeniable. When I say the federal government is making a mistake, these policies have real consequences. This is a moment in history where it's not going to be about the partisan divide when they write the books. They'll talk about the absurd politics. There's going to be real life and death consequences to this. They are now projecting by the model that the White House uses. They have increased their projections to show almost 90,000 more people are going to die by August. 90,000. What these projection models do is they change their projection when the facts change. In other words, when they see numbers going up in states, they increase their projection. So they watch today's numbers. They see more hospitalizations. They then increase their projected deaths because they see more people going into the hospitals. So they increase their projected deaths. In April, they projected 60,000 deaths by August. May, they projected 134,000 deaths. Now they're projecting 149,000 deaths. Why? Because they're seeing the virus increase and they're seeing the hospitalizations go up. So this federal policy has increased the number of people who they project to die by almost 90,000. It's not a Democratic projection. It's not a Republican projection. It's the projection of the model funded by Gates, which is relied upon by the White House. 90,000 people. Think about that. 90,000 people. Well, that's the cost we have to pay to get the economy back up and running. Really? That hasn't helped the economy. When the virus goes up, the financial markets go down. When the virus goes up, consumer confidence goes down. 
When the virus spread goes up, people get more nervous and less confident about government and about the plan and about their future. Feel good. Invest in America. Oh, more people are dying. Oh, we're reopening, but it's actually increasing the spread of the virus. But feel good. Come out and shop. People aren't stupid. They're not. People are smart. This crisis was created because the virus did not come from China. It did not come from China. Mistake. The virus came from Europe. The virus came from Italy. The virus came from France. The virus came from Spain. How did that happen? I never heard that. I know. Because nobody ever said that. Nobody ever told us. The virus left China and went to Europe. That's what happened this past January. And then the virus came here from Europe, January, February, March. Federal government didn't do a European travel ban until when? March 16th. January, February, March. How many flights flew into JFK? And how many people came? Three million. Three million. JFK, Newark International. Did we screen those people? The federal government didn't screen those people because the virus was supposed to be in China, according to them. That's how the crisis was created in New York. That's why New York had the high infection rate. It had nothing to do with New Yorkers. It had nothing to do with a blue state. It had nothing to do with anything about New York. It's because we were misled. We were misinformed. And the virus was coming from Europe. That's what created the crisis. So we had nothing to do with the creation. And then we had the worst crisis in the nation. And then we were left on our own, by and large. But we managed it. That's uh, our governor. OK. Uh, I, I think the reason I played that is because I think better than anybody, he sums up what's been happening with this whole situation and where he feels it's been going wrong. And it's not political. It's not a political determination. He feels that our government has let us down. And I saw a documentary tonight, which you should watch. It's on PBS. It's on Frontline this week, just about an overview of the whole coronavirus and where people went wrong with this and the problems we had with it. And um, there was one point which, and I'm trying to remember the actual statistic, okay? But the, uh, uh, one of the people said, or maybe it was the announcer, that if we had closed down the East Coast just two weeks earlier, we would have saved 80,000 lives. Okay. Now, of course, you know, that's in retrospect. But we, you know, we were made to look towards China because China was, you know, the evil empire, right? But the problem was coming for us here in New York from the other direction. And that wasn't taken care of until, you know, very, very recently. Anyway. Uh, I just thought you should hear that. It is a shame he's going to stop doing these every day. Uh, it's Friday's his last day, the last day of the Mario Cuomo show, uh, which we look forward to. And he says he will come back and do it when need be. Uh, but he feel, I th and I was thinking that he was going to get to the point where he said, I don't have to do this every day. I've done it for 109 days or something like that. And now New York seems to be on the mend or at least for the time being, 
And uh, I really don't have to come in here every day and tell you, well, it went from 17 deaths down to 14 deaths. Uh, and by the way, isn't that an incredible thing that we've gone from something like 800 deaths a day down to 17? And you know why? Part of the reason? That guy you just saw there. Uh, I don't know. People have certain things against Cuomo. He's a guy who doesn't mix his words. Uh, he's, a, he's a New York type, you know. But I got to tell you something. He saved my life. And he saved the life of Marjorie and saved the lives of a lot of New Yorkers by his actions. And I just hope that we don't backslide without him giving us a daily pep talk. Anyway, our lines are open. Uh, we're going to do, uh, we're doing, of course, Zoom. And if you want to be able to use Zoom, all you have to do in order to use it is, um, uh, is, uh, 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 simply go over to uh, our gabnet.net right in the center of the page there. It says if you want to join the Zoom discussion, just click here. You click there, it automatically puts you on here. It's uh, no, nothing really much to go on. It's not a big problem. Uh, also, um, let me see here. One other thing. What was the other thing? Oh, yeah, you can go over to facebook.com forward slash A Bennett. Got a link there at the very top of the page. And finally... Uh, the uh, the last place you can look is on the actual uh, YouTube uh, feed mm -hmm. itself uh, because right above the YouTube feed is us, okay? Uh, is No, right, right at the, uh, the YouTube feed at the bottom, it gives you the, uh, the number to uh, uh, the, what do you call it, the Zoom okay. address. Uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm a little uh, um, discombobulated here because people are coming on and uh, let's see here. Oh, there they are, folks. Uh, there's uh, Brian Neary, and we got uh, Phil Meyer, and we got Rob so far. How are you all doing this evening? Huh? Anybody? Not bad. Uh, not bad. Okay. Uh, I got a different view tonight. What? I got you big, and on the right-hand side, uh, I have a cascade We don't care. Of, uh, we don't care. Just go uh, up and t turn on gallery. Oh, okay, I, I thought it was a new view. It looked nice. No, though. I like it. Yeah, you see? Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, now okay it's fine. Just squares. Yeah, I don't want to have to deal with people's little meager problems like that. You know? Not a meager problem. I'm, what I, do you think I am? Do you think I'm a? Uh, 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 yeah, you're uh, a help. Technical support. Yeah. For the for yeah. Gabnet, I see. Okay. Yeah, well, w what number do we call for technical support? 342? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, no, it's a, it's a mnemonic. mnemonic. It's a fuck you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's the number. Oh, Just dial fuck you. Yeah. I need to close my door. Kids yeah. are walking around. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Not good for uh, kids. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> I, I got either allergies or the COVID. Oh, I got the allergies today big time. Oh, I, the chest is a little. No, but I, I don't have a temperature. See, I got my little yeah. gizmo here. I got from uh, one of our fans. Hold on, let me just check myself. Let me see here. Let me oh, see. Ninety-seven six. See that? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, yeah. I don't have a temperature. So I'm. Sounds fine. like everybody. Brian Snifflin. Uh, I've been blowing my nose all day. I was afraid they wouldn't let me into the hospital this morning to get my uh, yeah. charge of uh, radiation. Do, do they do things like check your temperature when you come in? Yeah, because you of have the COVID? to sanitize, sanitize your hands with the uh, goop. Uh, they ask you some questions, and they take your temperature. Yeah, yeah. With yeah the first day I, I went to pick up a prescription, I had gloves on and a mask, and they, they say, no, take off the gloves, use sanitizer, no gloves allowed in the hospital. Right, yeah. No gloves allowed in the hospital? By by yeah. us. You know. Oh, yeah, by us. Of course, by us. Yeah. Why, why can't you do have gloves on? Because they're worried about something you brought in from the outside. Oh, really? You yeah, so they just had to use hand sanitizer. Right Boy, they, are, they, they, they think of us as just being full of cooties, don't they? And we are. Yeah. We've been joined by Charlie and we're joined by Ray. I don't have to do anything anymore. I just sit here. It's all automatic, you know. Uh, and so if you click on that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening, you can just be part of this. Not that you would want to be, but I'm just suggesting it. 
Anyway, anybody hear what I just uh, played by Cuomo? Yeah. Any, yeah. I did. Yeah, I'll I get, did. I'll get I your takeaway in a while, Phil, because I'm sure it's negative. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Brian, your the thoughts? Signal. If you're an outsider and you listen to Cuomo and you listen to whatever Trump was doing, I think you would think that Cuomo was the president. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. He's certainly acting presidential. There's no question about it. But I think that what he did there was he one of the things that uh, we brought up last night was this whole thing about the president and uh, Pence saying, well, just because we did increase testing that we have increased uh, cases. But that's not the case because hospitalizations have gone up and that isn't a result of testing. OK. Uh, and um, uh, that, that was what, uh, what Cuomo said here. And it, it, it isn't, and the fact is, here in New York, we do more testing than anybody. We did 60,000 people yesterday in one day, and the number, the percentage of those people having COVID went down. So the more testing you do, the better result you get. Would you not agree with that as somebody in that industry, Brian? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, anyway, what do you think of it, uh, Rob? Did you hear it? Oh, we can't hear you. Oh, oops. Whoops. Oh. Huh? How about now? Idea. Now we can hear yes. you. Yeah, yeah. I had to press a button on the board. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's always something, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I, I did hear it, and I haven't heard him speak in a while because uh, I've been busy at 1130 with work. Mm-hmm. But, um, again, just how could you how could you have fault or find fault with what he says? He's talking about facts. Yeah. He's basing decisions around facts. Right. Not around which way the wind is blowing. Or by political uh, affiliation. Well, that's kind of what I mean. You know, just which way the wind is blowing. You know, I'm conservative, so I think this way. I'm liberal, so I think this way. How about the facts? Yeah. Yeah. And he's very, he always, he, he loves his facts, you know. Uh, I think it, it's sort of done worse. well by him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's worse because, you know, not just saying facts, but what the other side's doing is like against, I mean, they're lying. I mean, they're saying all these things about everything is fine with Codiv, you know, and, and there's no problems. But there are big problems going on right now. Well, by avoid by by denying them, you're avoiding them, and by avoiding them, you're causing them to spread. Yes, Ray. What? Sorry, I had to take up my mic off mute. Yeah. Um, yeah, I read today that uh, 76 percent of Democrats wear masks, and 48 percent of Republicans, or something like that, don't wear masks or wear masks. 48 percent of Republicans wear, uh, wear masks, and 76 percent of Democrats. Well, That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Well, really. well, it's because I mean, I guess because the Republicans uh, or the tr- the true believers are listening to Trump, who makes it seem like this is a walk in the park. Uh, yeah. N- meanwhile, he's going to kill off his voting base in Oklahoma on Saturday. Mm-hmm. You know. So. Yeah, but the bad thing is, then if you have those people that want to go see him so bad and live in your area, and they come back and they have it. You know, that, that's the bad part for everybody else. We don't care if they sit there and stay there and get quarantined for 14 days and die. Okay. But when they come back home yeah. and they spread it to other people, mm-hmm. that's where it affects everybody. It's fill time. A hundred percent of Republicans on GabNet wear masks. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> the one man. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I, I, you know what happened today to me? I, I wore a mask and I went into a pharmacy to get some chocolate and um, went into a drugstore to get some chocolate. It's the first time I've actually been in and really bought anything in, in weeks. And I, I was so just absolutely discombobulated because I was wearing the mask and I was wearing the gloves and I was trying to use my Apple wallet to pay for it and that wouldn't work and then I took out my American Express card and I swiped it but I swiped it in the slot I had forgotten you have to put it in the in the in the thing so you know it was one thing after another I could I, I was I felt like I was a fish out of water today because I was out of practice yeah so 
It's like a new world. Yeah. Well, I decided I would brave the pharmacy. Hi, hi there, John Larkin. Um, I, I thought I'd brave the pharmacy because, or not the pharmacy, but the Rite Aid, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, things seem to be better. I mean, here in New York City, we're about 1% of the people tested have come out positive, and that's very low. So, uh, you know, the chances that I'm going to bump into somebody who's COVID positive is much more remote than it used to be. Although then I got these guys standing on the street corner five at a time, not wearing masks, you know, and tongue kissing each other. You know, I mean, how long, how long, has, it been, how long has it been since the start of all the protests? Has it been the two weeks yet? Uh, it's been about two weeks. Yeah. 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 So that's an interesting to see if we start hearing yeah, about the we, have bump not, up. we have not seen a bump, at least here in New York. Right now, we've thing. seen a bump seen in other states. We saw one in Austin. Seen one. We've seen them in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, California. Seen, California, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's because I think part of the reason why we were a little bit on the better side of this uh, was because we had brought that number so low that the people in the march were probably not as infected as a bunch of people in the march, say, in Texas, yeah. as mm -hmm. an example. Uh, but then again, if you don't test, then uh, there, there's no problem. You don't have any cases, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to weigh myself anymore, so it means I won't That's gain right. any weight. Yeah. That's right. Right. <laughs> right. If you don't weigh yourself, you don't gain weight. Exactly. Yeah, I lived on that theory for a long time. <laughs> and then I got really fat. You know, so what the hell. Um, John, you have the wrong hat on. What are you doing with that New York hat on? Thank you for that That's hat. I like that. I like that hat. <laughs> what hat? My hat? The Yankee, the Yankee hat. The New York Yankee hat. Hey. Uh, oh, oh there the, it is. Yes. I'm glad Rob is here. I was listening today, and they were saying that Major League Baseball owners and the players <coughs> are at odds with one and over uh, with one another over pay and so forth, and they're holding out for full pay. Do you think there's a chance that the owners are going to fire all the players and then hire new ones? No, that's that never going to happen. And and also, there's been a big breakthrough as of today. Yeah. That they've sched they've settled on a sixty six game schedule or something like that with expanded playoffs, and they are going to give the players a uh, full salary for every game they play. Mm -hmm. Which is going to hurt. Huh? I think uh, the, the, I think the players suck for doing that. They're mm -hmm. screwing the owners, but that's you know they have a very strong union, mm -hmm. so they're going to get extended playoffs this year and extended playoffs next year. What does so, that mean? Well, there's going to be more teams making the postseason. Yeah. Oh. That's what it means. Oh. Bad for the sport, in my opinion, but hey. yeah. why, why about money? Oh. It's about okay. money. It's about yeah. more so, playoff games. It's like hockey where everyone makes the playoffs. Right. It make it, it negates 162 games. Oh. And um uh, and then you can have, you know, anything can happen. Baseball is not like, you know, it's if you know anything about baseball, it is a sport where anything could really happen. And so the best teams could get knocked out in the early rounds, and you could have a team under 500 that wins the World Series. Yeah. John, it's, it's shitty. John Larkin? Sucks. John, you wanted to say something? Fred. Fred smirks. John, can you hear me? John Maybe can't stop. hear me. Oh. Yes, yes, I'm talking yes, I'm to you. Talking to you. Yes. We but can't hear you. you, can't, you can't your hear mic you. isn't on. Sounds like. John, your mic isn't on. First word. Your mic can't hear you. Can't hear you. <laughs> what, what? See, he doesn't know. He has a Yankees hat on. Is that, even, is that even John Larkin? I don't know. Am I right? Is it John Larkin or is it somebody else? Yeah, Wait. that's his closet. No. Oh, no. That's Fred. Uh, that's Fred Smirks. That's Fred Smirks. Smirks. <laughs> yeah, why does it say? Fred and Ethel Smirks. Oh, that's Mertz. I'm Fred, sorry. are you there? I guess it's not John Larkin. Why did I think I was John that's, Larkin? It is. John. It's, 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 John it's, it's, it's John, but it has somebody else's name on it. Oh, no, he's going to write. <laughs> okay, here we go. Turn Sounds on your long. mic. Okay. It's, it's Fred Smirks. Fred you Mertz. You can't turn your mic on? Let me see here. Oh, is, is this Pictionary? Well, Jeff Stein's mic is off. 
He's not muted. And uh, Ray Renati's m mic is off, but Fred Smirks has no microphone. Uh, and Rob, Rob, where do you live again? I I live mean, hold in, on uh, a second. What does this say here? It Wait a minute. It says browser. browser doesn't support Zoom. Ah. Oh, use a different okay. browser. <laughs> use uh, use a different browser. Uh, I mean, why are you calling us if you can't talk tonight? <laughs> Download Zoom for crying out loud. He's got to have your browser will support Zoom. What browser are you using? Uh, How would he be on the program? Netscape Navigator? <laughs> Netscape Navigator. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go back to MySpace and try to log in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, Rob, where, where are you, Rob? I'm in Virginia, about 30 minutes west of West Virginia in the so Shenandoah that, Valley. I don't know that those areas over the East Coast, but is that, how do you Yankees fan? <laughs> I was from? born and raised in New York. I've been in Virginia for ah, 10 years. Ah. Only right. been out of the city. I worked in Manhattan for over 20 years and lived in Queens. Ah, okay. so, Does Virginia have a baseball team? Yeah, they have the Nationals. Oh, and not, yeah, Washington, D.C. but yeah. I see. Didn't the sports show go on earlier tonight? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, when I heard <laughs> that, the, left out. <laughs> that the owners and the players were at odds with one another. I, I didn't understand it, so I figured Rob could clarify it. Well, we're going to we, see baseball soon. We were yeah. talking today, a um, bunch of us on a Zoom call um, that I had with Shecky and my friend Stephen Laurie and Marjorie. And we were talking about, you know, what happens to the theater, especially the Broadway theater. And we decided that probably it's not going to come back after this. Wow. Uh, That's because, going to be interesting. Well, because here's what they would have to do. To begin with, they'd have to space everybody in their seating. Okay, and I don't know if you've ever been to a Broadway theater, but it's yeah. bad enough <laughs> these seats are so small as they are yeah. already. Uh, so let's say... They could only hold a third of the people they could normally hold by socially distancing them. That would mean they would have to do at least two shows a day in order to that, even be come, come back to some kind of money. That uh, would mean the people that were going to the shows would be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's well, brutal in some of those little theaters. Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. No, don't, don't you think um, that after we have uh, a vaccine, though, it'll come back, I hope? Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of friends who make their living on Broadway. I have four good <laughs> friends. Uh, I got, a, vaccine, man, a vaccine would help. You know, it would certainly yeah. bring things back because you could take the vaccine and then probably not get it so people wouldn't be afraid afraid to go to the theater yeah but uh you know i mean what about the thousands of of of, of smaller uh, live theaters throughout the country there's they're all closed yeah you know what they're going to do the at intermission they're going to give out hydroxychloroquine oh yeah that would be smart since it just got disapproved for the well there's a new hydroxy harley quinn which is uh <laughs> Uh, but it's a joke for all you DC comic fans. Uh, you know. um, what's happening is uh, uh, it, it's, it's the theaters are going to have to figure out a way to at least, uh, one, let me put it this way, once we come up with a vaccine, which is still, God, how close are we to a vaccine? Wasn't and, there some company I, that came up with some sort of pill recently that they said may end up being a vaccine? Pill? Trump keeps saying soon, soon, soon. I don't know. It was a pill, yeah. No, no. The, so I have don't an take idea a pill as a vaccine, Phil. I have an idea for theaters. Yeah. I Bubble. have I have a, an Oculus 3, what do you call it, uh, uh, VR goggles, mm. right? All right? And if they put in, I could go to NBA games. Mm. I could go to all these different events. Why don't they charge on these? I mean, you feel like you're sitting there. You look around. You see people sitting next to you. You well, can wait, communicate wait a minute, with wait a them. But no, yeah. you, you don't only see people sitting next to you. There are actually people sitting next to you in that well, stadium. Other, peop no, other people who are attending the event the same way you are. Oh, okay. Oh, there, you, there he is. It's Fred Smirks <laughs> sitting next to you in that well, stadium. Other, John, you turned on your audio. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey. Hey. Yay. Very good. Okay. 
Anyway, where were but we? I, I think I think the 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 virtual reality methodology, oh. and you charge people who get who have VR headsets, they can go to Broadway shows. You pay. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, it's impressive. You you think you're at these events. I was at the basketball game. I watched a game. Now, I'm not even a basketball fan, but I was amazed. I had front row seats to a basketball game. Hmm. Unbelievable. I've if seen the commercials done, for that. If you haven't put on a VR headset, it's freaking amazing. Really? <laughs> Okay. Crazy. Well, I Marjorie bought me one, and then we sent it back because it was just too much to set up. And you know. the, wait, which one did you get? I don't know. I can't remember what she. If bought. you didn't get the Oculus, one, they you know you don't have to connect it to a computer. It's it's a a device that is just a thing you put oh. on your head after you charge it. Mm -hmm. and there's no connections to make. Well, then how do how do you get a connection to your computer to watch? Oh, it? you well, you set up an internet connection. You set up a Wi-Fi connection, just the way you would. And on how your much does PC. that Oculus device cost? Ah, uh, they're selling for about four hundred and fifty bucks. Ouch! 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 But I love it. It's really cool. The things you oh, you have one too. Mm -hmm. Which one is that? I don't know. It's a scuba it's mask. A cheaper it, one. It, it's actually a yeah. scuba mask. You can also do it with a phone. They have. Where's yeah. my phone? Oh, wait a minute. I have. I, wait a minute. This one's have, a phone one. They have here. devices oh, yeah. that fit in your phone. Or, you know that mm -hmm. you put your phone into a, a mask like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's what. Go. That's what this one is. This yeah, is an inexpensive one, a cheap one. But yeah, you download the game and the. Some of us is actually pretty good for there how go. inexpensive this one is. <laughs> there we go. I have been on balloon my, uh, rides. I have been to an Elton really? John concert. Hold on a second. Wow. Let me let me turn it on. Freaking believable. Hold on. Yeah, I've seen that commercial. They have the front row go. seat one, oh, like yep. with Curry, and they're showing the guy with that. There yep. And wow. I've had, uh, I've also, I've also uh, docked uh, the international in the international space station. I okay, have I'm actually ready, docked. I'm, I'm ready if the if the plague ever comes back. I'm in good. I'm in good stead. Anyway. So if you were on a balloon ride, could you jump well, out that of That was the, certainly a no, waste of time for a lousy and, gag. No, no. Anyway, you can look down. Huh? You could look down. down. You could look 360. Oh, really? It's. Wow. Look, I mean, it's amazing what you wow. can see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how many people could actually see a Zoom performance? So you can you, oh, say that again. How many people could actually watch a Zoom performance? Well, a would, Zoom performance? No, or yeah, Zoom? to a VR to suggest that you're at a theater. Oh, well, so anybody they say, has, an, anybody yeah, an has event, a device. Yeah, because you, yeah, you an you, event they could do. Uh, teams can do like five thousand. They say as an event really? or only one presenter. I think it's an amazing way to go, especially in this world we live in. It makes you feel like I felt like I was at an NBA game. Really? I mean, wow. It's just okay. unbelievable. Mm. It's a way to make some money well, for the Broadway theater. Well, you know, I mean, technology is going to have to solve the problems that we're going to mm -hmm. have now because it's a whole new normal. You know, it's a whole That's new right. way of life that we're mm -hmm. going to have to adjust to. And the problem is that most people aren't ready to adjust to it. You know? No, no. Uh you know, I mean, uh, least of all our president, you know, he's not trying to adjust to it. Uh, he doesn't even know what's going on. But we yeah. knew that in 2016 when he was talking about the coal industry like it was, uh, you know, a Tesla. <laughs> yeah. and, and Biden talking about a phonograph, uh, you know. Well, uh, well that, I, can, I consider that he's not president of the United States yet. And. Uh, uh, I sometimes still call. Me. I sometimes still call it a phonograph too. So phonograph. Yeah. Uh, what, what was I? What hey, was I, I have mean? LPs in a turntable. Yeah. Me too. You know, you were sometimes uh, people of, of Charlie's age and my age and and Jeff's age refer to a CD as records. Yeah, they call it I vinyl guess. today. Mm -hmm. I'm going to listen to vinyl. I'm uh, going to listen mm. to some yeah. vinyl. I call them records, man. Yeah. I still listen to my records. Me yeah. too. So yeah, when you say I got two turntables, uh, yeah. I got rid of yeah. all of mine, and, uh, and I threw out a B and O turntable. B S R or B and O? B and O. Hmm. No, don't know that uh, one. It's a, they were um, Danish. I have a. Oh, oh, you're talking about Bang and Olufsen. Yeah. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I know the company. So why didn't you call them Bang & Olufsen because you use Victrolas? <laughs> I had a Victrola. Uh, a RCA Victrola. You wound it up. You wound it up. These little doors, Jeez. which was where the speaker was. And, Amazing. Uh, I had one record, mm-hmm. and it was a Hawaiian record, as a 78. And yeah. um, Do you ever it, see the ones you, with the thick records you, like that, where the instead of the grooves being side to side, it's up and down? No, so, I haven't. So let me ask, oh, yeah. let me ask yeah. Phil this, and I'm afraid to ask it. Did you hear Cuomo that I played? Yeah, I did. Uh-huh. What, any, any takeaways from it? I mean, it, do you think he's wrong with any of what he said? Some of it he was right, and I just got tired of uh, him blaming everybody else. Oh, Trump didn't close down Europe until the 16th of no, March. No, he didn't say Trump. He never said Trump. He federal never said government. Trump. Not once. When, he, when you say the federal government, who do you, who do you think closed down? Well, there are a lot of people involved Congress. in the federal government and complicit in the federal government and in the laxity. Trump, Trump closed down China, and you knew he, who he was referring to, and he was being political. That's my takeaway. Oh, okay. What do you think of your friend uh, Mr. Bolton's book? Ain't going to come out. Oh, it's, it's out already. Out. What about the First Amendment? <laughs> it's I guess out. it doesn't Phil, fill. It's out already. Not, uh, not, that's when, the you're, Phil, not when you're Phil, uh, it's, when you have classified information. Phil, and it's, you're, it's, it's out. out oh, no, crap. it's out already. The reviewers have copies. Mm-hmm. The press well, has and I copies. I guess Mr. Bolton is the next one to go to jail. <laughs> that'll be the day because you, you, know, you, know, our, you know what our president said it, he better it, hope it, Biden it, it, said, it said our president said that uh and i hate to call him our president because he's your president yeah. um uh our president said that he was um uh uh, uh, uh that it was it was confidential material what do they call it? confidential material because it was conversations between himself and the president, and all of that is confidential. He says all conversations with him in the in the Oval Office are classified. That's Which is blatantly right. untrue. But but you what is tell it? Anybody. All right, let's forget about the content. Let's forget about all that, and let's just ask the question. Here's a guy who was appointed by Trump, who was a Republican, who is and is not the first one to do this to come out against them. What does that say? Doesn't that make make you even think for two seconds that maybe there's some truth to some of these it says, crazy things? Uh, Bolton was fired. His career was over, and uh, you know this was his last hurrah. So every so everybody that Trump hires and gets fired is it's a, it's a bad job by Trump then for these people that he's vetting. Disgruntled employee. I, I know he's going to he's gonna say disgruntled. He employee. hires the best. He's, I mean, if the, if what you say is correct, that this has happened way more than once in less than four years. I mean, yeah. way more than once in less than four years, and so that just says he's bad at doing that. How about the? Uh, how about the? That's why he hires family. Who is it? Who is it? The granddaughter who's written a book? Niece. Uh, yeah. Niece. 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 Yeah. Yeah. She's written a book. She's looking to cash in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about people who just, I, guess I, I, I disrespect Bolton for doing one thing. He should have come out without having to write a book. Yeah. He's making he money testify, on this. And the reason That's he didn't right. testify under oath is because what's in the book is probably not true. No, he didn't testify right. because he was <laughs> threatened not to testify. And now he's out so he can do what he wants. If that happened today, he would probably testify. But it bothers me that he's doing it in a book form instead of coming out as, and being a patriot and saying, you know what, this some stuff going on that shouldn't be going on, and I'm going to step up and say something about it. Well, I think Bolton was asking Trump to uh, get involved in Syria, and uh, tr- uh, Bolton's a hawk. And, you know, I kind of liked Bolton when he was uh, with the <laughs> Bush administration. I imagine you would like Bolton. But, you know, uh, with Trump, he's, he doesn't want to get involved in these conflicts. And you had Bolton that was pushing him to, to get involved in those conflicts, and he fired him. You know? So what's, uh, what's the big deal? So the, one of the allegations is that the president requested Chinese help to win the 2020 election. And they and the spokespeople said that it was blatantly untrue. Whose spokespeople would those be? 
That was Trump's spokesman. Oh, oh so, well, okay. gee, that has to be true then. And, yeah, and this yeah. is from a man who doesn't ever lie. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Alex Bennett requested Chinese help uh, to uh, to put on GabNet. Yeah, one you know, thing. On Fridays. This is not his just wife once. For the Chinese again. Well, I didn't this is not tell just I, once in I, four years. Yeah. This is like how often, and each one of them you write off like a fanboy. Truly, truly. Just hey, as far as I'm concerned, he's the boss. If these guys aren't going to, you know, uh, work the way he wants them to, you get rid of them. I'm a chicken. I don't fire anybody. And, you know, and maybe if I did, I'd be a little more successful, you know, because I, I carry a lot of dead weight on my shoulders. I carry people that don't don't produce and I produce 10 times more than everybody else so I can pay these guys. But that that has nothing hey, so to do with I this. I won't produce. Can you hire me? Hmm? <laughs> You'll produce? I, I, will, I, know, I, won't, produce. I won't produce. Can you hire me? I need a job. Yeah. <laughs> That's my standard hire. <laughs> yeah. Can you fog a mirror? <laughs> I can fog as many mirrors as you want. Whoa, you're All hired. Day. <laughs> okay, <That's, let's, laughs> you're my kind of guy. <laughs> Did anybody see a B Biden's speech today? No, I know. Well, it was bit. actually I was I was I was actually impressed. <laughs> uh, no, no, I. What are you What are you laughing about, Phil? I mean, he's going to be our next president. Um, I think so. uh, uh, he um, he was more presidential than I expected him to be. And he really took Trump to task in a very methodical manner. And it was one of the better crafted speeches that I've seen in a while of this nature. And I'm not as afraid of him running as I once was. Yes, John? I don't think there's going to be any debates, do you? Yeah, there will be. Um, if, they, if they're going to do, do them, them on, it'll probably be virtual. Yeah, you could do them on Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I think one... I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it because... <laughs> I mean, if I was Biden, I would say, Trump, you're not worthy. How can you debate a pathological liar? Uh, I think once the uh, uh, conventions are uh, completed, uh, there'll be a series of debates. Yeah, I think, well, though, I don't think it's going to be with an audience. I think it is going to be oh, like this, Zoom. You know, hmm. I don't think it's going to be... Uh, uh, and uh, oh, speaking of voting, you want to hear something that really pisses me off? We're having a primary coming up, right? So Marjorie sends a way to get us set up so that we're uh, able to vote by mail, okay? All right, or cheat by mail, as Phil would let us believe. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Vote by mail. <laughs> and um, is this uh, a Democrat uh, thing? She sent uh, she sent it well, a couple of weeks ago. And the other day, she gets the ballot in the mail. I haven't gotten my ballot yet. It, it went to another Democrat. I mean, what is that about? Shouldn't I be getting one? And then I wrote them today, and they haven't written me back. Maybe you'll get a second one. Uh, do you, do you uh, participate <laughs> in jury duty? No. Then forget about voting. What do you mean? I, I don't have to serve jury duty. Yeah, I understand. But then you don't have to vote. You, you know, I mean, you don't go to jury duty. You don't. Well, vote. I mean, I would like to vote. Well, you know, but Trump's been listening to the show, I think. Yeah, but I and never he, I he never, held your ballot. I never got one in the mail. And it's the New York City Board of Elections. So it's fucking de Blasio I've got to deal with, I guess. You know, uh. <laughs> Hmm. Well, you know, you, you uh, De Blasio will vote for you. You're not. You and I aren't going to disagree much on De Blasio, Phil. No, I didn't like him from day one. Huh? I didn't like him from the beginning. Really? I, mm. I, uh, I, I thought he was just wonderful. Mm. No, no, no. What, what did you think about where uh, he wants to suggest that everyone should suggest who the vice president is going to be? What? To Biden or uh, Biden. who? Oh, else I thought Biden's that? deal was he was going to pick a woman. Well, no. He, and then just the other day, he said, I'd, "I'd like to know what everybody thinks." I'm this was all the Blasio of... or Biden asking? What were you saying, Joe? Biden. 
But Charlie, Biden, huh? Charlie. Oh, I thought you were still talking about I get all kinds of emails from Biden asking my opinion. Of, and he gives me like 15 different women. And they're all women. And it says, who do you I prefer for vice president? See, that's what I don't like. Put you know, your own uh, name uh, no, I'll tell you what I don't like about no, I, don't, I have no problem with yeah, it. I get those. What I don't like about <laughs> Biden, <laughs> what I don't like about Biden was that he automatically believed that he should nominate a woman. He would said in advance, well, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for a woman." Well, wait a minute, that's almost an, a sexist determination to say that in advance. If you pick a woman, okay, but if you say my choice is going to be a woman, so they don't. Men need not apply. Is basically oh, if you're holding a job, and and you said as you were holding a a job search. Oh, by the way, women need not apply. They, well, they, if he doesn't pick Warren. That's the way it's been for 240 years. No, but <laughs> what I'm don't you get what I'm saying though, Charlie? You know, sure, go ahead, pick a woman, but don't say you're going to pick a woman. You know what I'm saying? He yeah, boxed himself in. Optics, yeah. yeah, he boxed himself in. He's he's got nowhere to go on that one. Well, which yeah, one? He got, he got boxed in when they asked him during a, one of the uh, news conferences or debates or something with Bernie, and he said, "Yeah, I'm going to pick a woman." And you could tell he just decided at that second. Can you imagine what do Bernie? Ray, could you imagine what Putin could do to him if they were negotiating something? How Putin could box him in? He'd end up, you know, surrendering. Didn't uh, didn't Putin uh, box yeah. Trump in like crazy? Yeah, yeah. I mean I saw Putin it on television. Owns Trump. He yeah, does. Yeah, he I saw it. I he saw it. Trump a long That's time ago. News. Oh, yeah. oh no, that, hey, Phil, myself. Phil, you are forbidden on this program again from ever claiming that something is fake news to get out of an argument. Uh, okay, what, what's another word for fake? I saw it. Here's Phil, all the news. You, <laughs> well, you saw you saw Trump and Putin in that meeting when Trump gave in, right? You heard you saw it, didn't you? No, he when he just when he, when he crashed our CIA with Putin sitting there, and it was like treasonous. Well, and, and did you he, hear he what Bolt was it. right? What Bolt he was right? Look what oh, the no, FBI no, no, no. did. You can't do that. Comey you can't do that to, okay. struck. Right. I just dare you. Comey, Comey struck, struck did nothing wrong. Oh well, well when they're in jail, we'll talk about it. You don't you talk against the family. Putin. You don't talk against the family. No, you cannot. You cannot trash our Godfather. own CIA and FBI and NSA Phil. to the leader of our biggest enemy. You can't do and that. They, and the highest levels of the FBI was complicit the in framing. Only oh, my God. That's yeah. not my Seven point, Phil. Obama's White House. Seventeen That's not my agencies. point. Phil. Yeah. Phil, I will bet you any amount of money that that um, the Durham uh, investigation turns up nothing. Uh, Barr does not uh, indict anybody. Uh, all those senators that are going to subpoena in all these, you know, uh, Clinton uh, people, they'll they won't do any of that because if they did, those people would start talking, and and, and Trump doesn't want those people talking. He's no, all. I, I, don't, I don't. I'll bet you a hundred dollars on that. Well, you know, I don't think you're wrong for another reason that I don't think that they ever prosecute these people. You know, they do wrong, and then another administration comes in, and the rug gets pulled over it, and nothing ever happens. It's kind of like Trump when he says he's mm. going to sue somebody and then never does. Right. Yeah. How many of Trump's people are in jail right now? And then how many yeah. Russians got indicted? Well, they're, they're in jail because of the what, FBI being crooked. Well, in, 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 the in oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is attorneys in jail? In deference to his that, Ray. His attorney's bummed. In deference to that, wow. Ray, the fact of the matter is, do you know which president had the most of his uh, people wind up in jail? Nixon. No. Uh, Reagan. Yeah. Alderman Reagan. Ehrlich. Reagan. Reagan. Reagan, yeah. Yep. Really? Either indicted or yeah. in jail. More people than even oh, Trump. Reagan. Yeah, Reagan had Mitchell. Was it or who had Mitchell as a that was, uh, that that was Reagan. Nixon. That was that was Nixon. Nixon. That was Nixon. Uh, he had Mitchell, Ehrlichman, uh Lady did Liddy ever go to jail? Oh, yeah. 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 He, but he, but he, even he, in spite of all of rat. that, in spite of all of that. Yeah. There were more people indicted, I think, under Reagan's administration than Wait. under any other. Liddy, wow. Liddy took a pack of matches. <laughs> He's still alive, isn't he? What? Yeah. 
Liddy. Liddy's still alive, isn't oh, yeah. he? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Radio. Radio. Alex, did you ever interview Liddy? Liddy? Well, let me explain Liddy to you. The only reason he ever got into radio is because I turned the job down. Oh, yeah? Uh, I was supposed to go to work in Washington, D.C. at the WJFK, uh, outside of Washington, D.C. And at the last moment, I turned down the job that I was offered because I, uh, for any one of a number of reasons. Uh, but I turned it down, and the guy they immediately went out and hired was G. Gordon Liddy, and that's how he got into radio. Uh, and I just went, how do you go from me to G. Gordon Liddy? Yeah. Kind yeah. of the same. Yeah. yeah. And there it is, WJFK, isn't it? They say, yeah, JFK. He has the best stash, though, that's for sure. Yeah, WJFK. And the cool head. It's like Daddy Warbucks with a mustache. Yeah. 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 This picture's got to be 24. Five years old, twenty years old. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I did interview. You have oh. G. Gordon Liddy's headshot at your fingertips. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that says yes. everything. At least that he's says consistent. Everything. At least he's consistent. Oh, no. All no, no. up he, on the wall. He idolizes <laughs> all felons. <laughs> Actually, I, I I I didn't interview him because he was waiting in the car. I think I, who did I have on? I had a, a, either Abby Hoffman on or Jerry Rubin, and they were going around debating. This was, I was in San Francisco at the time, and they were going around from town to town debating. What are they going to debate? They I don't know. They just debated because one was right and one was left, right? And um, uh, uh, they, uh, I was, uh, they, I think it was, I think it was Abby said to me, uh, G. Gordon Liddy's down in the car. You want me to have him come up? And I said, fuck him. I didn't want to have him on. He was in the same car that uh, those guys were in? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They were traveling around from show to show. Oh. <clears throat> now, what? Uh, G. Gordon wow. Liddy, he went to jail. He, he did a couple of things to get, his, uh, to, you know, to get his rep. He took a pack of matches, and he let it burn up in his hand, but he did yes. something with a rat, yeah. I think. You remember what that Oh, by was? the way, speaking of a rat, the mouse. I saw the mouse tonight. He was in the bedroom. Oh. This mouse, this mouse is driving us crazy. He won't eat the poison pellets. We've got them all over the place. He probably goes over to the pellet and goes, ha ha, <laughs> you know. So I've decided to give him a name, Larry, Larry the Larry? mouse, Larry the mouse. Larry. I was, we, and Marjorie suggested we call him Phil, but I told him, her told her no. The rat's nicer than that. <laughs> the mouse is nicer than that. So. Yeah. How you doing tonight, Jeff? You're so quiet. This good, good. Why, why don't you uh, get something that can kill that that little rat? I know we have these pellets. We got these decon pellets, oh, and we put them, pellets put them around. Call this guy. Yeah. We can kill it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get a mouse trap. Well, no, mouse we have, we've got we have mouse traps all over the house too, and I even got this thing that's a sonic thing that uh, is supposed to repel rats and and roaches and uh, no. Uh, the mice, the, the mice are just, I don't know if there's one of them or whether there's a whole bunch of them. We know one of them is dead because we got them. So there's a second one, and that's the one that's running around now. Murderer. And I could have sworn I saw him dart under our bed tonight out of the side of my eye. a whole eye. bunch of them. Hmm? Not just in your house, but downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. You. yeah. you have to put oh, several you. traps. They're all over yeah. the world. They breed when I, when I, like yeah. Mike. <laughs> the other day I had rats in my shed. There was one rat that scared the shit out of me. And and then it ran out under the fence. And I was cleaning out the shed and I'm with a shovel and all of a sudden I see this little baby rat. I thought I killed it. I dig around some more. There are ten baby rats like an inch long oh, in there. Oh my god. And they're all cute, squeaking, and I thought I kill I thought I was killing them, but so I left it. And because I did some reading, the mother came back in the middle of the night and took them all yeah, well, and Ma- brought them somewhere else. Marjorie asked yeah, our uh, asked our super, uh, uh, could these be rats? Are there any rats up here? And he said, no, we only have rats in the basement. He says, <laughs> all the rest of the ones in the apartment house are mice. You know, they get in the superstructure. Somebody downstairs moves out, they come up, you know. Yeah. Um, roaches used to be that way too, although we do not have a roach problem here. They they do a very nice extermination thing here. So they can't spray for rats. Or don't mice. you miss New York, uh, 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 Rob? 
Huh? Uh, don't you miss oh, New boy. York and my? I had roaches in my my Astoria Queens apartment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, God, boy. roaches. I hate. I roaches, hate roaches. Man. I'll tell oh, you God, something though. Too. I had a bad roach problem down on Houston Street, and so I told the apartment house, and they said, "Okay, well, we're going to bring an exterminator in." And they brought in this woman, and I, all I could call her is she's the, uh, she's the uh, Mengele of, uh, of 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 roaches. Of mice. Uh, no, of roaches. And she came in, and I swear to you, she killed every single roach in that apartment. I mean, they came scattering out of everywhere. But she was killing them like crazy, and she was getting off on it. Okay. <laughs> And 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 after that, never saw another roach in the apartment. Yeah, Gone. But we've had roaches at the store, and um, I have I buy this stuff. It's a powder, and you mix it with water, and you spray oh. it with a Hudson sprayer. And so I have the warehouseman every couple of months spray it, and then when you come in in the morning, they're laying dead on their backs all over the place. Oh well, yeah, I know the stuff. What it's called is, and I used to get it. Uh, and it was in a spray form, and they called it. I, f I forget. Yeah, it. I forgot the name. I, yeah, I get like but it had a it had a it had a Puerto Rican name, and I figure if it was made by Puerto Ricans, it definitely would kill roaches. Okay, because <laughs> they're the experts. Okay, <laughs> and <Call the> roach. <laughs> and I would take this like stuff, a roach. and they they seem it seemed like they always liked cereal, you yeah. know. So I would like take cereal out of a out of a shelf. And I put it down on the counter of my kitchen, and then I would take this thing and I would spray the stuff into the box, and then just and then stand back and watch it start jumping up and down. Yeah, wow! <laughs> as the roaches inside were dying, and then they the trouble with this stuff was is it killed them right there. It's it's like you want some kind of cockroach uh, spray that makes them go away and hide somewhere and die. Well, right? What do they get enjoyment out of with carpet samples? How you know? I I mean cereal I can understand they want, but carpet samples? You know they're not even wool. It's nylon. You know. What, yeah, what fiber. They well, like nylon. Well, well, I just got a new. I got. I have a picture here of it that Marjorie gave me of a box a little bag of cookies and it's got mm -hmm. a little hole in the side of it where the mice the mouse bit into it and, oh yeah i've been down there you road. know so we're gonna have to somehow uh, we're gonna get probably get an exterminator in here and get rid of these damn mice you yeah. to teach them how to open the bag properly so they you're lucky that <laughs> that's all they did they went through my pantry and wiped everything out there were marks on everything and everything was turned over yep. we had to empty it out we had a huge pantry full of dry goods mm -hmm. What a mess that really? was with. Yeah. Threw everything out. That terrible. Wow. Anyway, so my breathing's been heavy, um, heavy and, today. And my fraternity, hmm? my fraternity in college, the, the worst roach problem I got in Berkeley it was horrible. Wow. You just could not get rid of them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was filthy, that's why. Mm. Anyway, I get, I get, where's my, where's my asthma stuff? You got an inhaler? Well, I have an inhaler, but I, I was just going to get, uh, here, we'll do this. This is the, I keep using this allergy thing because my, uh, my, my breathing has been really heavy today, but it's, it's not like I can't breathe. It's not like I've got, you know, the coronavirus. I had one, one, of, those, I remember I had one of those things and, uh, I was looking for it this morning. I couldn't find it. And then I found Zycam. And you take the, it's like a Q-tip that you break well, off. It, it had to be an old one because they don't make those anymore. Well, it must have been. They were uh, banned by the time. FDA. Really? It yeah. worked. <laughs> oh, yeah. It worked really well. Yeah. You know. Um, so. it, it can't give me any more cancer than I have now. Hmm. But I'm just, I, you know, I just like this. And the, and the allergy levels are not high today, but for some reason it's. It's getting to me. I never get allergies, and I'm I'm just destroyed. Yeah, yeah. Well, I Are get you able to sleep in here as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, Not you, no. Alex. <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Are you able? Are you able to sleep? Yeah, I'm able to sleep. Yeah. And I'm not coughing. You know, I'm not coughing from this. So I, you know, it's not, it's not Corona. Plus, my wife, my wife got tested the other day, and she came out okay. So. 
I figure by osmosis, I'm okay too. Oh, look who's now someplace where he isn't walking down the street. Ray. Hello. In his yeah. office. I'm at home. Yeah. Uh, Uh-oh. Yeah. Can't hear me now, probably. No, we no, can okay. hear you. We can hear you. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. I'm in a dark class. Oh, where are you? Where is it? All right. Sorry. Why don't you... Ray. Just... Ray, it looks like, you, looks like your ceiling looks like an Eichler house. It is. It is an Eichler. Oh, really? Wow. You have Eichler's in here. You You remember when Eichler houses sucked and now they're kind of considered yeah. a, an antique? Yeah, yeah, they have no insulation. Yeah. They they have thin walls. They, Small rooms. All glass. It's, you know, and... Uh, My car garage. Right. Terrible. Can you, well, the glass uh, is great. Can you uh, tell us, those of us who are not from the West Coast, what that is? Uh, an Eichler home, they, this guy Eichler built all these homes, like tract homes. They Tons were cheaply of them. made, and they were cheaply made, and you could buy them cheap. You know, it was pr uh, right. post-war. Okay, yeah. people were like coming home. You had an atrium in the middle, like a yeah. yeah. home on Some Long Island. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. yeah. zen. They were cool houses. They are cool houses. Well, they're kind of cool now. Yeah, because well, they back... don't see them very well. Actually, they had uh, uh, they had the heat built into the floor, radiant heat. But mm -hmm. now that most of them are well over fifty years old. The pipes leak, and people have had to then uh, cut the pipes and uh, find another way to heat the house uh, besides the radiant heat, which was actually very comfortable. No yeah. carpets, so Phil doesn't like them. Yeah, well, they used to have vinyl <laughs> asbestos tiles, uh, and that oh. that allowed for the radiant heat. Oh, the reason you couldn't have rugs is because you had the radiant heat, and the rugs yeah, exactly. would, would not allow it to, yeah. 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 Well, wouldn't it just warm up the rugs and still keep you warm? Uh, you could actually have rugs, but you also had problems with the old wood floors that the wood would buckle from the moisture that the heat gave. Well, radiant heat was a sexy idea at one time. They thought it was yeah. a great idea, and then I guess it just fell out of favor because it was kind of impractical. It, they it's great in a bathroom. Use, they, yeah, they, they use it under mm. tile now, yes. and yes. Uh, I, I put it under uh, wood floors, laminate floors. They have electric yeah. radiant heat. And, and what, about, what do they use for garages, like the East Coast? Do they use some kind of heat for the floors? For the garage? Not yeah. that I know of. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're wealthy. People uh, hook these, uh, they plug in some sort of heater that goes over the engine to keep the block from yeah. freezing. You can also my my cousin they they're in oil they're wealthy hmm. they they have all their their driveways are heated so that uh, oh my god uh, yeah you don't well, have to worry about blow or shovel huh? so That's yeah idea. wow this is the most civilized discussion we've had in a long time nobody's yelling at anybody we're talking oh, about well, it's Trump's about fault Trump. that they're heated uh, <laughs> huh the Trump's right? fault well everything's Trump's fault. Yeah. I had one of those houses, the the electric they're heated. Yeah. floor, and yeah. it was on cement. Yeah. How do you feel? How do you feel, Phil? Truthfully, had, about and let's forget for a moment about your love for Trump and the fact that you'd love to suck cement. his dick. Okay. How do you feel? How do you feel, Phil? Uh, wait, who's turning? Who turned up the audio let's here? Forget for a moment. Who's whose audio is that? Audio. Huh? Just started. Okay. Maybe Ray's reconnecting. But, sorry, you know, sorry. Uh, well, wait a minute. I can, I can just kill Ray's there, audio. There, there. I fixed it. Oh, you fixed it? Okay. We don't have a picture on you, though, Ray. No, How do I feel Ray. about what, Big Al? Oh, no. What I was going to say about this rally this weekend, don't you think that's ill-advised? They said that they're going to follow some guidelines, hand oh, out masks and sanitizer. Yeah, yeah, they're going to hand out masks. How many of those uh, people, how many of those Trump people now, do you think million, are going to wear masks? A million people have applied to go to the rally. That's if you believe Trump. I don't believe that. And just like uh, the the crowd at his a three million crowd. Yeah, exactly. But, well, yeah. you know, but uh, I think the uh, the venue only fits twenty two thousand, and yeah. so he's talking about using an outdoor stadium uh, as as well that can fit forty four thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, Overflow. Here's how he here's how he here's here's how he overestimates things. A while, last week, I think it was, he said that he had talked to uh, over 100 of the governors. 
hundred companies? Smoking <laughs> mirrors. He said the HIV. He said the HIV vaccine yesterday, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, he did say the HIV <laughs> vaccine yesterday. And then he realized oh. he decided it and tried to get out of it. And there, and there was no <laughs> HIV vaccine. Um, but wow. no, yeah, he actually he actually said a hundred. I spoke to over a hundred governors. <laughs> maybe that's what I, it felt like. No, like maybe Rob that's says, what he believes. Like Rob says, these little things keep just piling up. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like these little. Every day there's little something. Yep. Too funny. And then, then his walk of shame down the ramp at uh, West Point. Boy, that was a goodie. That's a terrific one. You you want to talk about Joe Biden? They had a they had a picture of him walking up that same ramp a couple of years ago, and he ran up. Yeah. Well, here here we go. Mm -hmm. That's because, the reason he ran up. It was a mouse. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the uh, the Trump uh, the Trump way. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Trump way. Yeah. Oh well, you know. Listen, he's been good. <clears throat> he's been good for laughs, and once he's gone, uh, he's totally ruined the country. So we're going to have to somehow repair it. Take I years. can't wait until he gets reelected. That's not no. going to happen. Uh, I, re I I believed it for a long time, but let yeah. me tell you something. He's going to. I I saw a report on television today, or a video of a report that was on television about these people, these kids, who went to a bar, and there were sixteen of them. They all went to a bar in Florida, and they were like, you know, this thing's over. This thing's over. All sixteen got infected, wow. and now they're like. Hmm, you know what? This thing didn't go away. It's just that we didn't know. I mean, they're not going to die or anything like that. We didn't Every know. one of them How got infected. How could they not know? All these Trump people are going to go see Trump now in some place with either 20,000 or 40,000 people. How many of them are going to get sick? He's not doing it in New York because, where, where, because well, he would do that, right? The interesting thing is there's so few cases in, is it Oklahoma? What do you mean? Uh, They've had the highest number of cases uh, in, uh, in, yeah, so now they've since, got the since the beginning, since the beginning of this. No. Since the beginning of this, it's it's a rather they rapid. There were very few cases in Oklahoma, and so if if this in 1937, rally, how many? <laughs> in 1937. Yeah. And so if this rally produces a, a significant number of cases, and you'll know in two weeks after the rally, uh, then you know they'll they'll know. You know, well, well, it's got to take well. a, it's got to take twenty thousand people to get infected to know. When you I, see the numbers I, going up in Texas, yeah. we see the numbers going up in Arizona. And not uh, not uh, instead it was because North the, Carolina. The, I hate to say it. North it Carolina. Those people are from Oklahoma. They come from all over this 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 the country. What do you, you think? Know? There's just a million people in, in in Oklahoma. I guess so. Well, no, you know, I'm, I'm saying it, that it'll be interesting to see how many people Oklahoma. show up. Because personally, as much as I would have enjoyed going to one of those rallies, but I wouldn't have enjoyed waiting at two o'clock in the morning, uh, two days before to get in. That that's just not going to. This happen. isn't a showing of the next Star Wars movie. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just wouldn't do that. It's like a and, great uh, concert. You know, if I can't get a photo pass, I'm not going. So, uh, but the, uh, you know, but the the thing is. You get all of these people; they're they're just going to get sick from being out outside for. Uh, two yeah, and but uh, you know the point is that that uh, I I think that you know he has no respect for his own fans, you know to to get put them in this kind of jeopardy, you know. Uh, well, he he believes what he believes. I even if I could no, get he, in, all his all his beliefs are based on his own ego. Well, he he, everything he does is based on will this get me reelected or will right. this hurt my reelection? That's one of the things Bolton pointed out. Like, is that there's nothing he does that doesn't have to do with how it affects Donald Trump's chances of getting. The, I, I'm know. thinking about me, and I'm saying to myself, I don't think that even if I could get into the rally uh, without waiting, and I had I could get in through the back door or something, I wouldn't go. He'd be ridiculed uh, and, for wearing a mask hmm? by those people. He'd be ridiculed for wearing a mask I, I by don't those think people. So. I, I think <laughs> a lot of people will wear them. 
Yeah. Trump won't put. Uh, uh, how, uh, well, how many do you think? When you watch that rally, how many do you think are going to be wearing the mask? They're going to be handing out masks. And it's hard to tell, and I'll tell you why it's hard to tell. And hand uh, sanitizer, they, which these guys are going to use to jerk off with. Well, but the camera, <laughs> oh, look, uh, it, look. it dissolves too quickly, trust me. Uh, you know, the, um, the camera always faces one direction. They rarely ever pan the audience. Have you noticed that? No matter they, will who, pan, they will pan the audience on this thing, for sure. Well, and you're going to have 5 to 10% like wearing one, it. One view, that's it. You're going to have 5 to 10% wearing it. Again, Trump had another thing today, and they had Billy showed two military guys with the mask. Everybody else didn't have masks on. Today. Yeah, and you had the, the, yesterday at the uh, the signing of the uh, his. Uh, oh, uh, it looks like uh, John uh, is wearing a anti fata mask. <laughs> anti fata mask. Yeah, anti fata. Anti fata. Yeah. Well, I'm 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 joining Antifa. I, I, I sent in, I want, I, I want, I just registered to get my uh, card, my Antifa oh. club card. Maybe yeah. Antifa grade. Are you ready yeah. for the beatdown? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know, Antifa doesn't exist, but Boogaloo, what is this thing that the... Yeah, Boogaloo, what is that? Boogaloo, Boogaloo boys, yeah. Yeah. The, what is it called? What's it called, John? Boogaloo boys. Boogaloo, Boogaloo boys. Yeah. Yeah. does exist. Wasn't yeah. Desi Arnaz's? Uh, uh, that was Babalu. Babalu. Boogaloo, Babalu. <laughs> Electric Boogaloo was the hip hop movie that we did, the break dancing movie. Yeah. Yeah. The 80s. Yeah, was a, Electric it was Boogaloo. A, it was a real bad uh, sequel, so that's why they, uh, that's why they, 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 they say the Boogaloo is going to be like the sequel to the Civil War or some shit like that. I don't know. Something yeah, they, yeah, they want, they want revolution. Yeah. yeah. Don't everybody it's wants Rebel. War. Yeah. Today they it's want coming. By the way, you know, the guy shot Trump. a sheriff here in Santa Cruz. He I shot he, he shot a sheriff in Oakland and uh, Santa Cruz, and, and he was deputy. one of those Boogaloo boys. Has anybody been watching these videos by the Lincoln Project? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You mean uh, what's her name's husband? Yeah, Kellyanne Conway's husband. Yeah. yeah I love they're anti-Trump yeah. uh, ads. They they're not pro Biden. They're not pro Democratic. They're just anti-Trump. Yeah. yeah. Really they're a positive good. message. Uh, it's good. They're good. They're well done. Yeah. 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 What do oh, you mean? Sure. What do you mean? It's a very positive message. Speaking out against the tyrant. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah grab yeah. the pitchforks and uh, you know and uh, torches and you know go up to the castle and uh, you know kill the. Well, you're so mild lately since you've been Wait. taking those hormones. <laughs> <laughs> you really are. You're, isn't he much more mild? I got the yeah. flu. What His cheeks are a little rosy. Yeah, get a little. <laughs> hey, I'm getting a haircut Saturday. So, the skin is you know. soft. Huh? Yeah. Corona test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And he just had his first period. Your tits are going to get bigger. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm getting a haircut Saturday. I'm going to be a happy guy. I mean, I can't stand it anymore. I think I'll get a haircut tomorrow because Marjorie does it for me. Yeah. yeah. Do would... the ponytail. Come on. Did you ever have a ponytail? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I had I a ponytail. Never go with that I had long. a ponytail years ago. I had a I had long oh, yeah, hair. Yeah. Came down. I here. had an afro. Then I would do the ponytail. Uh -huh. And you know something? When I finally cut off that long hair, I felt so much better. Me too. I did the ponytail. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah. an afro. I made I made Charlie look white. I had such an afro. <laughs> <laughs> really? Charlie. Yeah. Son of a bitch. I used to use a pick. Really? You, <clears> had, the old you, days. you had curly hair like that? That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So did I. I had a big afro. Oh, there you go. Yeah. He's oh got his man! Big, uh, the seventies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I had hair coming all the way down to here. I, I remember. I knew you back. Oh, then. you knew you hey, back then. Yeah. Is that a, a shaft of a uh, certified pick? Yeah, I got yeah. it in the seventies. Yeah. That one looks <laughs> painful. Yeah. Wow. Who's that musician who keeps one in his hair all the time? Um, to this day, uh, yeah, from the roots. I mean, the roots. Yeah. Drummer from the roots. Quest yeah, love. yeah, yeah. I know a photographer. Quest love. Named, uh, That's it. Poland. He's known as Fro Nose Photo, and he keeps one in his in his hair for publicity. Yeah. He's got a big throw. Hey, folks! It's so it's been so nice. The Zoom. Everybody's 
it, it's much it's easier. Clear. It's just it's clear, and everybody when they talk, they can hear each other talk, and they can talk over each other, or interrupt each other, and they know they're being interrupted. It's it, it works, yeah. you know, well, much better than uh, than than that fucking Skype. I mean, <laughs> anyway, yeah. hey, listen, that's it for tonight. I uh, want uh, uh, thanks to uh, Brian, and thanks to Phil, and thanks to Rob, and thanks to Charlie, and thanks to Jeff, and thanks to John, and thanks to the hand, Ray. And, uh, uh, you know, if all of you will give a big Thanks wave goodbye, I'll give a big, big, big good wave goodbye to you as well. Okay, there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and uh, they come to us courtesy of Zoom. I'm just killing our, our Zoom feed now so we don't have to deal with it. Uh, but uh, listen, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He comes on here with a little show called The Intersection. Uh, why don't you call him using the, uh, the uh, Skype uh, instead of the Zoom, okay? Uh, and Gabnet Live is his Skype number. I'm Alex Bennett. I'll see you again tomorrow night unless this, oh, these allergies get me. Boy, my chest is just... <sighs> hmm. Anyway, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her. Tell her I love her and stay safe, everybody. Wear a mask, okay? Save my life by doing it.